Hi everyone, it's me! And today, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, let's go! <laughs> it was September of 2015 and the world fell in love with Pizza Rat. This determined little rodent served as a symbol of many things to many different people. Some saw themselves struggling with dreams so big they seem impossible. Others saw a reminder of how gross New York City's subway is. And for the nerds of the world, aka me, I saw Splinter carrying home a snack for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Welcome to game. Haha, <laughs> it's not game theory, it's film theory. <laughs> That's the first time I've screwed it up. Hello, Internet. Welcome to film theory. The oh, let me try. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to film theory. Hello, hey. <laughs> The only show on the internet that can talk about mole people, radioactive isotopes, and kids' movies all in a single episode. Don't believe me? Challenge accepted. And so it goes. Another summer, another go around with everyone's favorite radiation infused superhero. No, the other one. <laughs> no. Spider Man. Fantastic Four. The other, other one. Who's that? Okay, let me be more specific here. Everyone's favorite superhero who was doused with radioactive chemicals. Ah, oh, it's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! That never! Okay, though it is worth mentioning that the TNMT were originally meant to be a parody of Daredevil, the devil of Hell's Kitchen. Why? To protect the kitchen. I can- Go the Ramsey! Can totally see the resemblance there. Since the 1980s, this franchise has been cranking out comics, cartoons, live action movies, action figures, and breakfast cereals, and nothing has been able to stop it. Not even Megan Fox's acting. And yet, I have a confession, in all that time, I still can't figure out the proper occasions to use the word cowabunga. One day. One day. Oh my god, Nepa looks so cute, aww. Congrats on your marriage, and right now you become a dead pet. Mm hmm. With a dead bot, lah, of course. Lah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A dead bot, a beautiful boss, too. Mm. This longevity is doubly impressive when you consider that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Gobunga! This has to be one of the weirdest, most far fetched concepts ever. I mean, really, sit there and think about it. Four giant mutated turtles raised by a super intelligent rat in the sewers under New York City become pizza loving, crime fighting ninjutsu masters who befriend one of New York City's most noteworthy television reporters who just so happens to be totally cool keeping the biggest news story ever a complete secret. Seriously, April O'Neil, where is your journalistic integrity? You've got like eight Pulitzer Prize winning stories here. Radioactive dumping, super mutants, animals that can talk, the existence of aliens, a ninja crime syndicate run by a cheese grater. Take your pick! Run by a cheese grater, what the? Anyway, the mini Matt Pat that lives inside my heart desperately wants the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to be real. So today we're gonna explore how possible these things really are. And yeah, you may laugh, but hey, anything can happen in New York. Fist fights between cartoon characters? Happened. Boba Fett playing the accordion? Happened. Mutant reptiles in the sewers may have happened because believe it or not, there's a pretty convincing argument to be made that all the ingredients to making the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles might exist in the sewer systems of New York. Huh, interesting. So you're trying to say that there's a pretty convincing statement. Uh, it's possible. Hmm, okay. Oh, now, before you go blowing up the comments, let's all take a breath for a second. To address question one, no, I'm not off my medication, but thank you for your concern. Medication, that goes. And number two, no, of course, I'm not claiming that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are real. Obviously, this whole universe is about as fictional as it gets. Is there a nunchuck-wielding terrapin who's gonna save you from being mugged while using 80s slang in downtown Manhattan? Sadly, no. But giant mutated pizza-eating turtles beneath the city? Cowabunga, we're gonna find out. Yeah, Kawabunga! Did I do it right? No? <sighs> One day. 
one day. Let's start off pretty simple. Is it possible that turtles like the ones we see in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles could be in New York City? This one's easy. Yes. According to the Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic book series, specifically Volume 2, Issue number 18, the Ninja Turtles are of the red-eared slider species. Fun fact, in the wake of the first TMNT movie, released in 1990, England was flooded with so many red-eared sliders as pets for children that they became an invasive species that clogged up the waterways. So yeah, in an ironic twist, the creation of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles actually increased the likelihood that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles could exist. And that, my friends, is life imitating art. Now, to an outsider, it might seem like the only- LIFE! In imitating art. Place in New York City that you're gonna find a turtle is in a zoo or at the bottom of a suspicious bowl of soup. But in fact, there are red-eared oh. sliders living wild in the middle of Manhattan within Central Park. There's a large pond where turtles congregate that is plainly named the Turtle Pond. And according to the Central Park Conservancy, uh. there are five turtle species living wild inside that pond. The most numerous of which is none other than the red-eared slider. Mm. Coincidence? I'm not too sure. red-eared sliders aren't like betta fish that you buy one week and flush the next. These little guys can live between 50 and 70 years, so there are bound to be some teenage turtles in the mix. Check that one off the list. Oh. Film theory videos say Kamabanga by Diet Coke Proof Turtles exist in New York. Okay, so big deal, the right kind of turtle is found in New York City. But can you find them in the sewer system? Again, it's an easy yes. The Associated Press reported in 1990 that turtles are commonly found in New York sewers, with some large ones up to 50 pounds in weight. Now, some of you might argue that in each of the live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, we've seen the turtles in Splinter living in fairly spacious underground dwellings, and that nothing like that would even be possible in the sewer system. But a closer look at the movies suggests that turtles might live somewhere else under Ground. In the first live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, April O'Neil gets mugged by the foot while she's waiting on a subway platform. Raphael fights them off, carrying a knocked-out April back to the turtles' hideout. But interestingly, he gets there by going down the subway tunnel. And while we see the turtles in what are clearly sewer and drainage pipes, there's nothing there to indicate that their home base is necessarily in the sewer. Instead, oh. it would make more sense for them to be around an abandoned train tunnel. These tunnels are gonna make much better living quarters, much less susceptible to flooding, and much less likely to reek of poop. And there's plenty of proof that people can survive in the abandoned train tunnels under New York. One of the best pieces of evidence would be the 2000 documentary Dark Days, which shows an entire underground community for the homeless ah. in an abandoned train tunnel. It's sequestered, it's roomy, and it can even get electricity sometimes. And it's not what? like this is a unique thing either. There are literally dozens of unused underground tunnels and train stations sprinkled throughout New York City. Therefore, it's plausible that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles could find a subterranean hideout that not only fits their needs, but keeps them in the shadows. shadows. You know, since the new movie is out of the shadows. Anyway, at this point, we've... <laughs> oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. Keep it in the shadows. One more time, I'll try, I'll try. I'll try this, okay? In, in the shadows. Sorry. We got teenage turtles of the right species who could be living under New York. But now for the question that thousands of middle schoolers have asked for ages. Can a turtle eat pizza? <laughs> yes. Yes. Red-eared sliders are omnivores and will eat pretty much anything. Cowabunga. Was, was that right? One day. One day. So we have teenage turtles in the New York sewers who eat pizza. What's left? Well, mutants and ninja. And since we can't have them learning ninjutsu until they're walking on two legs and wielding a bow staff, let's look at the mutant part of the equation. So what do we know about the mutations that the fictional turtles experienced? We get a fairly clear explanation in the second feature film, The Secret of the Ooze. Here's what Professor Perry says about the TGRI ooze that caused the turtles to mutate. An unknown mixture of discarded chemicals was accidentally exposed to a series of radiated waves and the resulting ooze, as you put it, was found to have remarkable but dangerous mutagenic properties. All right, I'll forgive the fact that Dr. Science here uses the made-up word mutinogenic, he means mutagenic, and instead focus on the idea that the turtles were exposed to some radioactive toxic waste and this caused them to grow to their incredible size. So is there any real-world proof that radiation plus organism equals giant? Indeed there is. In the what? years following the Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan in 2011, there have been numerous reports of very strange wildlife in the waters off the coast. For example, here's a picture of a regular wolffish, and now okay. compare it to the picture of this giant mutated wolffish. Wow! Holy wow! 
Oh my god! Oh my goodness! No way! How? What? I mean, what? Caught off the coast in 2015. Ah! Kill it! Kill it with fire! Burn, you demon spawn! But seriously, I would eat that in a sushi restaurant any day. <laughs> now, some might claim that it's hard to. <laughs> My pet is like, no, no, but delicious. <laughs> Prove that this nightmarish wolf fish was definitely a product of mutation caused by radioactive material, but when you consider the fact that the waters near Fukushima feature radiation counts over 2,500 times the legal limit, it's a pretty likely culprit, especially considering how out of proportion parts of its body are. But still, it's not like there's some source of nuclear radiation leaking into New York City's sewer system, right? I mean, who would be dumb enough to place a nuclear power plant just a few miles away from the most densely populated city in America? <laughs> Uh, the 1970s. That's <laughs> Indian Point Energy Center is a large three-unit nuclear power plant that was built about 36 miles away from Midtown Manhattan. And and you must understand, right? It's understandably all right if with proper procedure and safety standards. But, but the chemicals used inside. Why are you using uranium? Why are you using uranium? Why are you not using thorium? Uranium can cause kaboom! Thorium can cause a slightly less confusing kaboom, right? And moreover, moreover, the fault is not as bad. My bad mentioned that it's 1970s, so it's 50 years ago. Gosh damn it, 50 years ago. 50 years ago, these idiots. Opened its doors in 1974. Well, there haven't been any major disasters at Indian Point in its 40 year history, in early 2016, yeah, this year, it was reported that radioactive material from Indian Point was leaking into the groundwater at a greatly accelerated rate. How so that's why I really like it that they. If they close it, I, know, I really like it that they close it. Repair it, improve the quality standards, improve the safety standards, alright? Use a different element. And reopen it, right? You have better safety protocol. You're following 1970s. Come on, things improve a lot. Safety standards increase, improved. Thank you. How much more radiation than normal, you ask? 80% across the board. And one well in particular showed a 65,000% increase. And the most prominent contaminant was tritium, a radioactive isotope that's known to cause mutation. So much for green energy, unless you like your energy green because it's glowing from radioactivity. Am I right? No. Badoom ching. So how much would this affect New York City? India not funny at all. Point is located upstream of Gotham, right on the banks of the Hudson River. The same Hudson River that flows to the west of the Bronx and Manhattan. Looks like the bodies of mafia informants aren't the only thing polluting the Hudson these days. But <sighs> doomching again, if those elevated levels of no, radiation not funny at all. somehow are able to make their way Deja vu. down to the Hudson River and into New York City's water table. That waste could end up anywhere, including in the sewers beneath Manhattan for a few red-eared sliders fresh out of Central Park. And become Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Still, I know this all sounds ridiculous. I mean, sure, the Indian Point Energy Center opened up in the mid-1970s, which is exactly the right time since the first live-action movie was released in 1990, and in it, Splinter says that the turtles are 15 years old. Weird. But that doesn't mean anything. I mean, if the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were really real, we'd expect to see a sharp drop-off in violent crime in New York City starting around 1990. And... what? What's that? That's exactly what's happened? Kawa f***ing bunga. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Welcome back to the Super, Super Amazing Man Card Tournament. Oh my god. I miss it. Welcome, Welcome back, back to the Super, Super Amazing Man Card Tournament. Where 
Wow, we have not done one of these in a while. It's good to be back. So today's question is a really simple one. Which turtle is your favorite? Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, or Raphael? Seriously, do people really like Raphael? Leonardo and Donatello all the way. Leonardo because he has two cool swords. Donatello because his color is purple. Hey, no shame in a guy liking the color purple. Click on one to cast your vote and find out next week which turtle happens to be the film theorist viewership favorite. Heroes in a half shell. Turtle power. Next power. week, a different take on some undersea action. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching this video. So, which is your favorite? Hmm, which your favorite different turtles? That's four. Choose one. Well, for me, I think that all of them are amazing. And, well, just um, good role models for us to look after. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you find this video very interesting and very educating. Isn't it? Quite, quite fun, right? <laughs> If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have any of us to focus the formula channel and hope to see you in the next video. But hey, that's just a theory, a film theory, and cut. Thanks. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye! Don't forget to subscribe to my channel! Thank you. Please.